Welcome, Annalise. Yeah, welcome. So, so this is the inaugural uh, up level. Um, so welcome to the game. Let the games begin. Uh, may the fourth be with you. As, as uh, uh, does everyone get that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> actually, today is Savannah's second birthday. We we um, we created the foundation on May fourth um, with with a view that May 4th is going to become a mythic day, you know, the day of uh, Jedis and, um, you know, just uh, bringing, bringing more magic to our lives. And so um, it's our second year, but second birthday today. And it's really appropriate that today is the first, um, the first up game, the first up level. Um, and so just to introduce you to some basic language here, um, an up level is essentially a weekly uh, sprint meets a retreat. So it's, it's what we're going to do here as the Savannah team that are kind of organizing this um, game experiment um, is um, we're going to uh, every week pick a different topic and invite together the experts we know in the field to come together to apply collective intelligence around what are the most exciting emergent areas for that particular topic in society. So obviously sound, sound for health is a, is a very important topic for us all. And so we wanted to start there, you know, in the beginning um, was the word. And um, so we thought this was a very appropriate place to begin. And um, the goal of this, um, this time together, it's, it's eight hours. We've already done two with the dinner. And the whole idea is that life is out of balance right now. Um, we, we're, we're human doings more than we are human beings. And so we wanted to create a container where we could start to experiment together in greater harmony. And so we broke our time. We, we, we said yesterday, actually, you might laugh, saying that we only play, to get, we only play eight hours a week. The rest of the time we're having fun. <laughs> um, and um, the, the intention here is that it's four hours of yin, which is deeply connect, connecting, it's all about being. Um, so we're in this yin zone for the next half hour, and then it's, uh, and then it's four hours of yang, uh, which is all about collective action. It's all about um, us bringing our collective intelligence, our years of collective experience into the field and coming up with what's called an upgrade, which is a, a, a document that we will be producing by Thursday and it's a summary of the eight, uh, the eight kind of biggest ideas, projects, initiatives going on that we can crowdsource together to then put those, uh, that upgrade in front of funders and say that look, sound for health is a really important topic. Um, here's our effort over an eight hour period to kind of capture into an the collective intelligence of the group of experts that we brought together. And so that's what we need to do today. Everyone I'm mute, gonna, please. Um, share more as we go. Hey guys, can we mute everybody's microphones, please? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Th thanks, Rachel. Welcome. So I'll share more as we go, but um, but what we wanted to kick off today, just in the spirit of Yin, is um, Sarah's going to lead us through a guided meditation, and um, then we're going to go around the room, introduce just our names where we're located, where we're calling in from. And, um, and we're gonna share how many years uh, each of you have been a sound practitioner, however you want to interpret that. And so, um, and then we're gonna go, Amanda Gregory is gonna take us through a, an amazing transcendent experience. And then we're gonna go spend an hour um, coming up with what, what, what are the next steps for us. So thank you all so much. Um, there's nothing we appreciate more than you sharing your time with us. You've really, you know, it's, it's, it's a deep honor to gather together so many um, luminaries of this space. And so we're just massive gratitude. And I'm gonna talk a bit later about some of our plans to make this regenerative for everybody involved. So, but I'll, I'll bring that later. So over to you, Sarah, thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Lucian. So, I invite everybody to sit comfortably and to close your eyes. 
and to feel your body relaxing mm -hmm. into your chair or wherever you are seated, or relaxing into your feet if you're standing, feeling yourself supported, and focusing on your breath as you breathe in and as you breathe out. And if everyone can mute. And as you breathe in and breathe out, just allowing with each in breath, allowing yourself to enter more deeply into your inner space. And as you come into that inner space, just seeing or sensing or noticing how we are all standing together in the dusk outside of the opening to a cave. And just seeing or sensing or imagining that cave opening, a dark mark drawing us in from the dusk, the opening a little bit low, a little bit cramped, requiring us to bend down. And we're about to embark into a journey into this cave together. And the oldest among us will go first because the oldest knows the way the best and the youngest among us will go second because the youngest is the most curious and the most brave to go into this darkness. And the rest of us will follow in turn. And we each bend down and enter into the opening to the cave. It's a little bit tight. You have to wriggle a little bit, squeeze through. The ones who go in first help the ones coming behind, offering a hand, pulling forward into the cave so that we are all standing inside the cave together. It's dark, but there's still some light coming from the outside, a faint light. It takes a moment for our eyes to adjust. And once we're all inside, we have a sigh of relief and satisfaction that we've all made it here together. It's a bit damp in the cave. You can put your hand out and feel the cool dampness of the rock. And we form a chain holding hands as we walk forward into the cave, feeling a faint breeze coming from the bowels of the earth through this cave, as if the cave is a giant mouth that's breathing its air on us. And we walk forward together as it becomes darker and darker, feeling our way with our hands on the walls. This path has been followed many times before. And we are confident that we know the way at the same time, we feel a little trepidation going through the dark. I and the others who are hosts of this event are fire keepers who have in our pouches embers that are burning and we carry torches, but we will wait to light them until we arrive at our destination. So we walk forward 
into the dark. Hello. Takes takes a few moments of walking. Seems like a very long time. Hard to know how time is operating here in the dark. But we come together suddenly into an opening, a big open cavernous space. We can feel the opening in the air swirling around us, even though we can't yet see it in the dark. And we all come together and gather around in a circle. The fire keepers light the torches and an amazing open cavernous space opens up with crystals gleaming from the ceiling, hanging down into this enormous space in the earth where we've gathered. And we're surrounded by a deep quiet as we listen to the song of the universe. And we are ready to do our work together. When you are ready, open your eyes and come back into our shared container. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for everything you're doing and being. Well, look at that. We have 22 experts. <laughs> it's funny what happens when you put numbers out and uh, <laughs> every time we're on a roll we're on a roll every time we say exactly how many people are going to come and it somehow works out um so we amanda is going to um take us through an experience and so if we we, we it, it, it's like um the last talk before the bar opens mm -hmm. we can kind of keep it as short as possible just name where you're coming from and how many years you've been a sound practitioner. And as soon as we've gone through the 22, um, we will open it up for Amanda to take us through a shared experience, which some of you have had the, um, the, the privilege of experiencing and it's, it's amazing. So thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you, Sarah. And um, I'll introduce the co-hosts um, from Savannah and, um, and the up game in a moment. Should we start, Brian, do you want to start first? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Lauterbaum. I'm located in Boise, Idaho. I have been a musician for about 30 years, a multi-instrumentalist. And the last 10 years, I have started delving on the path of sacred music and sound healing. Brian? May, may yeah. ask, I, I'm sorry to do this because we're gonna, we definitely are gonna get time to do this, but what we just wanted to do to open the container is just your name, where you're calling from and how many years you've been a sound practitioner. That was it, I'm done, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. And I realized I needed to, um, Sarah, ask the eldest among us. Which I'm gonna wait for someone to. <laughs> <laughs> who knows who? Only only we know who. Only we as individuals know who the eldest among us is. But exactly. um, yeah. So uh, my name is Sarah Murray. I'm one of the hosts and conveners and facilitators of this event. I am trained in shamanic practice, and I'm not a sound healer per se, but I have worked with many sound healers and I run mushroom medicine ceremonies in Northern California and do other healing work. And so I appreciate the incredible power of sound 
and I appreciate the expertise of people who are here and seek to support you in bringing this important work more widely into our world. From Alameda, California. Let's go around. Let's go, Emil. Thank you. Hi, my name is Emil Yansa. I have been a sound healing practitioner for seven years, and I am in Maui, Hawaii. Dawn, we're going round. I'm not sure if you see the same break screen as I do, but Dawn and then Serena, then Danielle. My screen is different, thank you. I am Dawn and I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area and I am not a sound practitioner. However, I've been using sound with my work of reprogramming the subconscious mind for 20 years. Thank you. Thank you Hi, I'm Serena Malkani and I'm calling in from San Francisco and I've been a sound practitioner for the last eight years. Danielle. I think you called my name. Uh, my, name is, hi, my name is Danielle Hall. I am uh, coming at you from Atlanta, Georgia and I've been in the field for eight years. Leo. Then Shane, then Mikra. Hi, my name is Leo Raderman, and I've been working with sound healing for about five years. I'm in Marin County, California. Thanks, Leo. Hi, Shane. Hey, everybody. I'm Shane. Um, I've been probably holding space and sound and being a practitioner in it for probably about a decade now. Um, where I herald from is kind of all over the place, but at least where I'm grounded right now is in Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Micra. I'm Micra. I am in Austin, Texas. I'm in Sedona right now. Um, and I've been in some 30 years. Sherry and Francois. Morning, everyone. Sherry Herndon here from Vashon Island, Pacific Northwest. And I would say the sound practitioner is someone who is singing with people for a couple of decades and the power of singing and harmonizing together. And more formally with sound and singing bowls and the voice for about six years. Uh, Francois and then Amanda. Sorry, I think you're muted, Francois. We'll, you're muted right now. We'll come, Amanda, and then we'll come back to you, Francois. You can also unmute him, Lucien, on the participant list. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, hi, Shane Thanda. Hello, Paul, and hello, Sherry and Lucy, and you're all my new friends, Micron. Cypress and Emil, I'm so excited about you, and I can't hold it inside any longer. <laughs> it's 11:30 in the morning on a Monday, and I'm about to sing and I wanted to, uh, yes, keep this short. I wanted to keep this short. This is, um, I started singing when I was seven years old. I found out I was adopted and basically just like overnight was like, well, I, maybe I come from like a family of famous singers and just started singing. Um, and I started singing in church and that's how I grew up. But then of course that evolved over time to sort of um, go through this opera phase, sang traditional opera internationally and then did like modern super um kind of complicated 20th century opera for a while and then that sort of morphed into just wanting to understand science of music and math and mathematics and how it relates to sound and then um ended up doing what i do now for the last like five years or so thank you 
Francois, do you want to have a second shot? Uh, for some reason, I can't. Now you hear me? There we go. Yeah. That was my headphone. Sorry. So uh, hi, everyone. I'm Francois from France, actually. And, um, and I've been a sound healer for, I'm a musician, but I've been a sound healer for about 10 years. To be short. <laughs> Hello, um, my name is uh, Lucinda, some people call me Lulu, um, and I'm speaking to you from San Francisco, even though I'm from London, and I've been a musician um, playing this thing and singing for the past 35 years with a focus on sound and sound behavior probably for the last kind of eight to ten years. David, speak to him. I think it's really been about 432 lifetimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the school for 20 years now and changed my life dramatically. I mean, Point Bonita, overlooking San Francisco and the whales here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Andrew Smitsman, calling from the Netherlands and been a musician for 38 years. Oh. I'm Dr. Paul Hubbard, and I'm in Austin, Texas. Um, I received a message late 1990 that if I didn't start using my voice, I was going to regret it for the rest of my life. This was a message from spirit and uh, I didn't want to have any regrets. So I began to work with voice and, and sound and have been doing that now for about 29 years in developing um, the work that I do, the teaching and all of that stuff. And I'm glad to be here. Marin. Hi, everyone. I'm Marianne, and I'm calling in from Long Island, New York. And I have been, I'm not a sound practitioner. However, I have been working with sound as a healing technique since, since birth, really. So 36 years. And, uh, and my whole family is in music, and I'm just, I'm so happy to be here and harmonize with you all. Thank you, Marianne. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dominic Swin. Uh, I'm in East Oakland, originally from London. Um, I've been a sound practitioner for about four years, um, but I've been DJing for about 30 years, so I think I've always been... Uh, within that context of providing music and, and uh, finding that connection with people. Beautiful. Jonathan. Hi, I'm uh, Jonathan Schooler. Uh, I'm not a, a musician or a sound healer of any sort. Um, I'm Amanda's boyfriend, but I also am a psychologist uh, professor at UCSB and I study consciousness and I'm very interested in investigating the impact of sound uh, on people. And he's also our, our resident professor of time and uh, I don't know if anyone else here agrees but there's some amazing correlation between the frequency of sound and the frequency of time mm -hmm. that we might have some fun investigating together. <laughs> Uh, I'll just say I'm also a study resonance and uh, very interested in how resonance relates to consciousness. As I think we all are. Thank you, Jonathan, for being here. Ra Rachel, your video's off. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Morrison. I am in Loveland, Colorado right now, uh, my home. And um, the gift that I'm bringing into this circle is um, words and prayer. 
and I've been doing that for as long as I can remember. And I have been hosting and co-hosting uh, these uh, upcycle experiments with Lucien uh, since we've started doing this. And it's been uh, quite a journey and I'm really happy to be here with all of you and learn ways that I can help support. Thank you so much, Rachel. Now this handsome god of a man, Mel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi everyone. I'm, uh, my name is Mel Seme. I'm calling from um, Barcelona, Spain. I was born in Cuba. I feel like I was born in music because I grew up in church and I don't know when, when was the first time I picked up an instrument. And uh, so that made it a little bit uh, an innocent way to, to uh, deliver healing and, and through music to people from a place of spirituality and a place of authenticity and, and sort of like looking for your truth. Because when you play in church, you play for God, you don't play because you're cool. And uh, always addressing music in this way was a way to sort of like receive that back from people. And for the last couple of years, by collaborating with American musicians, specifically uh, David Block from The Human Experience and our band Gone Gone Beyond, we sort of like uh, uh, through an experiment called The Lost Art of Listening, in which we sort of like go through musical experiences as meditation, uh, I sort of discovered for the first time how music is an amazing tool to uh, heal people's wounds in their, the deepest of their uh, emotions and souls. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you, brother. Ram, welcome, brother. Hey, namaste. Greetings, everybody. Ramayan here. And uh, I'm here on Salt Spring Island, British Columbia. Um, I see sound and frequency in many different levels. Uh, one, I'm, I'm a student of water. I run a water company. And, and if you look at cymatics and the structure of sound and water, you can see very evidently the actual nature of the sacred geometry structure of sound in water. And if you expose that into 3D, you can actually see how sound contains the information which builds the structure of DNA. Um, and so it's very, it's very on a physical, very tangible, very clear level the nature of how sound frequencies operate. And there's a lot of work and study to be done in there to understand sound frequency in water and consciousness and their connection. Um, you know, the Bible says at first there was a word and, and in the Vedas they say the sacred sound ohm is the underlying fabric of creation. So um, definitely passionate about this topic. And I also think that as artists, as Dharma artists, that understanding the sacred power of sound um, our capacity to unify in vibration as a catalyst for shifting the collective consciousness is um, bigger than I think we think or know. And I'm excited to see where, where that can translate in this next wave because we are so connected now through technology. And we're also always been connected because these bodies are technologies and the water in our bodies are antennas and we are uh, connected through ways that we don't even know. Um, so good to be here. Lucy, and I think it's back to you. Oops, sorry, our screen just lost the meeting. Um, Trish is next. Hi, everyone. I am so grateful to be here uh, with so many just powerful uh, people with such huge hearts and great skill in the arts of healing. And um, I'm not a sound practitioner. I'm a medicine woman. I've been practicing um, in the lineage of Bwiti, which is uh, from equatorial Africa, working with a plant called Iboga, which is a psychoactive plant. And um, of course, sound plays a huge role in, in medicine work. And um, I've been studying the healing arts for nearly two decades now, and just really uh, grateful to be able to be part of this group and contribute in, in whatever way I can. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Cyprus. 
Hi, so happy to be here with everyone. Um, I am uh, up in Marin, north of the Bay Area. Um, just re-transplanted back a few years ago from New York City. So on the last call, I recognized some great old friends and colleagues. Um, and I've been about a decade now working with sound healing. Um, and I'd say about 30, 35 years as a musician, uh, vocalist, coming out of um, more classical junk, jazz, funk rock, and then wanting to move really deeply into um, helping people move into a deep, deep state of listening and healing. So, so excited to be here and to contribute. Thank you so much. Um, Bobby, I know your video is not working. Yeah, hi. Aloha, everybody. Sorry, I don't have the bandwidth here. On the, I'm up on the mountain here in Mount Tamalpais, so sending love and beauty from up here with birdsong. Um, I um, have been healed by sound um, and the vibration of sound since I, I was conceived, so that's how I come into this space. And um, I've witnessed the colour of sound many times, so... Um, for me, it's a way in which we can um, collectively heal. And I think that's what the planet needs. So I'm on the mountain, um, Mount Tamalpais in Mill Valley, and I'm very honored to be here. Thank you so much, Bobby. Such a pleasure to have you. Um, Connie. Amanda's about to perform again. Oh. Hi, beautifuls. So excited to be here. My name is Connie McCallie, and I'm in Marin County. I'm in Fairfax. I'm originally from the East Coast, uh, Long Island and Jersey Shore. And before that, the Pyramid Times, where I feel like I knew most of you as well. Uh, so I've been a therapist for the last 25 years, <clears throat> integrating different levels of consciousness um, and helping people with their mapping in the 3D world. And it was more formally or formally on December 10th, 2016, uh, this wonderful goddess, Melissa Howley, invited me to um, a retreat with Alexander Tanaz. And that's when I first heard the gong and I was hooked. And um, the vibration in the sound was the portal and felt like the the mechanism that brought all of the work together and so i'm really excited to be here thank you thank you so much connie and anyone else before we introduce the savannah house family anyone else we've missed i it, the, the it's been like musical chairs with your um with your new the new form of halo is the the hollow box mm -hmm. um but uh, so I think we've got everyone. So with that said, I'd love to invite, <clears throat> I get to live with these people. We get to live <laughs> with each other. Um, so maybe Joshua. Yeah. Hi, it's Joshua here. Um, I've been working with sound for about eight years and um, it's just stoked to be here and in this crystal cave that we've formed and looking just so forward to um, all that's to come this week. Hello everyone, Brian here. I am uh, not a sound practitioner myself, but I'm really curious to follow along and see where downstream we might be able to activate whatever emerges from this container. Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a therapist and I would say I've been judiciously listening to sound for probably the past five years. Um, and using it as a meditative and contemplative practice um, and a beautiful tool to move people through healing trauma. Kia ora, I'm Mani and I hmm, am aspiring to tap back into what my childhood uh, musical self entailed and am loving um, everything that is encompassed right now in tuning into the vibration of COVID. Yeah. Beautiful. So welcome all. Thank you so much for being here again. And um, 
Amanda, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Amanda. Thank you, thank you. Um, it is an honor. I'm grateful to be sharing this with you. I just realized as I was hearing each of you talk, you have such a experience and wisdom in the realm of um, expanding your consciousness and also weaving that into your life's work. And you're also very self-activated people. Um, it could be fun and interesting. This could be an opportunity uh, if you guys would like to experiment a little bit with the container for this experience. It will be about 15 minutes long. You'll hear, I'll be improvising. Um, my intention is to kind of hold the mantra of, uh, from the Buddhist chant, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, in my mind. It's something I've been doing recently, having reunited with my biological family and they're Buddhist and it's been cool. And like, so it's just meaningful to me and it's a way of uh, just wanting to channel towards you uh, all your dreams coming true. And because you're on this path that seems really important and it's now sort of intersecting with our paths. And um, I would uh, be curious to see if we sort of treat this as a meditation and uh, I can, we can take a minute to grab headphones if you want to grab some headphones or if you want to just find yourself in a position where you're really comfortable. And then um, the sound is, is designed to emulate dreamlike states and also synesthesia. So, so everyone who's talking about seeing colors and, or sorry, hearing colors and we can sort of see the sound. Um, if you want to just like close your eyes while you're listening and just imagine that your mind is able to expand beyond the boundaries of your physical body and perceive uh, the sound and um, just having the sound be the focal point of the meditation in the same way that the breath is the focal point of the meditation, just following the sound and, uh, and also offering up if you'd like to your, your prayers, your desires, um, your wants and sort of the whatever intention you would like to hold. Um, and we can see, and if anyone has any ideas uh, or feedback or something they'd like to add or share, I'm so open um, to this. Feel free to chime in in the next you know, 30 seconds or so. So I'm just gonna now test the sound and make sure that it's coming through uh, my Ableton Live uh, audio. And uh, it'll be a couple of minutes before we start. And then um, whenever you start to hear bubbles, which will be the first sound we hear, um, you can just start taking deep breaths um, and keep that rhythm throughout. Okay. Everyone in this does it have Together. Let's just take three deep breaths together and try and stay in that rhythm throughout.
have it ready for yourself. Thank you so much. I hope the sound came out okay. I hope that it was an enjoyable experience and thank you. All that. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. So gifted. Wow. Thank you for sharing your gifts. And thank you for being a um, living embodiment of our intention of the yin section. Um, that this is about us connecting so deeply, us getting into heart synchron synchronization. Because maybe when our hearts and our breath synchronize, that's where we can really tap into our collective intelligence. And so thank you for being, this is the inaugural, this is the, the inaugural up level. And it's so perfect to give this um, experiential way of people um, really getting what it is to have harmony between being and doing. So thank you. So what, what we wanted to do now, let me just move this up. And I, then I can speak like this. So, um, so as I was saying earlier, each up level is four hours of yin and four hours of yang. And the intention here is that we can get into that deeply connected space so that we can really um, inquire into what wants to come through the collective. Think of this as a sound sangha. Um, that we're only meeting from a moment in time. But in that moment in time, our invitation is for us to show up as our best selves, uh, to, to leave behind limiting belief, to recognize that we can't even comprehend what we can do collectively. So like, let's create a container of possibility. And the, the invitation here is that through the four hours of yang, we, we will synthesize eight aspects of sound and health that the world really needs to know about, that could be the recipients of large amounts of funding, that could basically be a game changer. And imagine if each week we pick a different topic that is kind of like the building blocks of a new civilization. And we bring people, we bring experts together and share what are the things we really should know about as we're going into this golden decade. That's what it is to play the game. And then each week we're going to invite people that want to learn about sound and health. We're going to invite more and more people to come in and learn through this kind of gamified environment. Um, and the last thing I'm going to say, because we really do honor deeply, deeply honor both your talents and your time. And so our intention with creating this game is that everyone will get remunerated for their participation in creating it. We're just starting, we just launched last week. And so we need to go out and make that happen. But our pl plan is to launch something called STARS, which, which will be a, an energetic currency that will be created through the game. Think of it as like Super Mario collecting those gold stars, ding, 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 ding you know? Um, that's the whole intention of the game. So there's going to be more on the game as we go through, but what we wanted to start with is not what necessarily you're working on right now, although we will get there, but just in the spirit of creating the broadest possible container for collective intelligence. The invitation now is for us to just go, go around the circle again, and, let, and we'll, we're going to do a number of these circlings. Um, but what we wanted to start with is not a specific technology, but what we're calling it a channel. What channel of sound in health do you think needs to be represented in, in the group? Because then if we split into some different channels, like there might be, um, the, the, there might be research in like new technologies like the, that Amanda is using here. Um, but then there's others that might be researching into um, the, the sound and its effects on COVID virus for example. Those are two different channels. And so if we just could start by going in a circle and sharing what, what, 
what channel do you think must be in our conversation? What kind of stream, if you like, um, topic within the category of sound and health? Could we start there? Does that sound helpful? What, what reason we went there is we wanted to avoid jumping straight into the solutions and we wanted to create kind of st streams. And by the way, everything's an experiment and we would love your feedback as we go through this. But we wanted to create kind of ch like theme areas so that we know that we're not missing anything as we, as, uh, as we go into the upgrade at the end of the week. Oh, and the last final thing to say is the result of our work will be presented on Friday at 8 p.m., Friday the 8th at 8 p.m., uh, to the World Economic Forum uh, with the Young Global Leaders community. So it's, we've got some ways to get this momentum immediately out and these ideas immediately shared, um, which, is, which is really the point of the game. So um, who would like to go first? I'm not going to call on people. It's just open container if... if anyone has a particular suggestion in this, we'll be capturing out here on the chalkboard. I can go. Do you want to, before you go, David, do you want to give a time, just because we're, we have until 12.30, do you want to give like, a little, like each person one minute or two, just in case everyone has something they want to share, or do you want to just leave it? Let, let's, that's, thank you, Sherry, um, for, the, for so much for the art of, art of harvesting here. Um, so, so maybe like up to, up to one minute each, but I'd, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get onto a second question. Um, but just maybe a theme and the reason, and, and we'll just try and make sure that's all captured. Yeah, and a reminder that this really sets the foundation for the deeper work that we're going to do in the next three days. This is just kind of the broader scope of where and how, and mm -hmm. then we're going to dive deeper into that in the, in the next in the next day. Exactly, and we'll be able to break into teams around these. Uh, channels so shane i think did you want to go david david hey david hey go ahead cool um <clears throat> i often look at the whole perspective from physically which is around especially pain and all disease physically in the body mentally as far as brainwave entrainment for all the different aspects of delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma, sub-delta, epsilon. And emotionally, for releasing suck emotions and changing negative beliefs. And also spiritually for accessing higher energies to be able to work at all these other areas, whether it's just gratitude, compassion, love, joy, the frequency of your soul or the frequency of source. So when I've been listening to people uh, on the last call, I, I was often putting people in those different areas. And then there's what a lot of people are doing as well is doing combinations of these, right? Interdisciplinary, which is really where it needs to go. But it's harder to do science when you cross over, but that's where it's the most effective, right? call in a little source while you're working on a cell, right? But really the other whole area that I'm most interested in is completely different area is how the body works based on vibration, right? Because it's not just frequency. It can be a combination of frequencies. It can be a timbre. It can be a actual relationship between frequencies in the body. Uh, Bobby, I think uh, uh, we're hearing a little echo back from you, if you can mute, Bobby. Um, and also, as how sound flows through the body, which is really the aspect of musical flow, smooth flow. So what I feel most important is when you can find the actual flow, the actual way the body works based on all levels of vibration, then you have the, the holy grail of how it all works. And then it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So as opposed to just looking at one specific treatment to really research exactly the way the body works as music and vibration. That's what I feel is the most important and could change things drastically. 
Thank you. Beautiful, David. We're, we're capturing, Marnie's capturing this up on the chalkboard behind us in our drawing room. <laughs> I'll show you. Sherry? Yeah. So just really quickly, I was really inspired by Alexander um, from our Thursday dinner, and in particular around how we create um, more wholesome wholeness um, in groups of people through resonance and coherence. So HeartMath and the Global Coherence Initiative have done a lot of research there. But when he was speaking and he said sense making, I thought, you know, we really need to increase our wiser sense making in our culture. And could we even imagine how we were making decisions with in a container of a resonant field. And I just feel like that space is, um, a, culture needs it as like the larger culture of our sense-making abilities and recognizing we're musical beings. So let's bring that in to the places where we are receiving information and this kind of information overload and from what part of the brain are we listening? So that's that's a, a place that feels very exciting of of many for me. Thank you, Sherry. Who'd like to go next? I could share. Thanks, Shane. Um, so uh, I'll try to do my best to encapsulate this within a minute because um, I've been giving this a, a, a grand level of thought um, over the past five years. And I was just in a, a pre-seed accelerator startup program that really helped kind of focus uh, a lot of my intentions around how to bring sound healing more to the masses. And one of the actual biggest questions that uh, ultimately got addressed through um, my participation in the program was actually, why are people coming to us as sound practitioners? Especially working off of this whole um, perspective of, you know, everyone is their own self healer, correct? So then why are they coming to us? Why are people participating in sound healing? Um, why do they go to sound baths? Why aren't they actually doing this more at their homes for themselves? Aside from the lack of knowledge, um, acquiring wisdom from us who have either used this modality as a healing tool for ourselves and as well as you know to um to mirror off of what david was mentioning in regards to all the all the layers from the mental the physical the emotional the spiritual um for me what ultimately ended up being not necessarily an answer but more so of a guiding um a source of energy to facilitate solutions was the level of realism and pragmatism of being able to bring this to people who have no idea about any of this in the sense that um, you can reach somebody who is in a ghetto, who is entirely impoverished, you know, um, who, who has been systematically and institutionally um, deplored in their ability to actually have real solutions for their family, for themselves to find um, real uh, abilities to, to, to tackle their, their, their situation. And it doesn't have to just be somebody who's in a ghetto. It could be all the way up to, to a person who is a CEO who has millions of dollars and the only thing they have is money um, to be able to tap in into themselves at all of these layers and all of these levels and um, being able to provide the ability to apply these applications um, on all of these levels, I think is really, really important, um, especially from the scientific and the spiritual component. And I think that's why sound is actually such a beautiful um, tool, because it is a bridge between both, because it gives uh, credence to, to both layers. So um, that could that's be a, a, that that be a great example of a, a channel like sound and spirit as like one of the one of the areas that, um, of very worthy funding and research. So who would like to thank you so much, Shane, much respect to you and your work. Um, I would like to share. 
a little bit of my idea. I feel like, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like uh, music uh, can be uh, the perfect um, means for exercising your ability, ability to listen in general. Like you exercise your ability to listen actively and uh, through music it's like going to the gym of listening and when you exercise that ability you, you're not only um, accessing uh, music through your ears but you're also able to listen to yourself, listen to your environment, listen to your relationships. So I feel like um, it's a very important and a very beautiful tool to uh, open that uh, portal in people's um, abilities by uh, helping them be more aware of their ability to listen actively with, with way more awareness because it's not just about listening with your ears but also how that access your ability to listen in general so that you can interact with the world from a place of more awareness. What, are, what about something like, um, no, it's just beautiful, like activating human potential through listening as a channel? I love that. And that's exactly it. It's, it's, it's if, you, if you access your portal of awareness through music, that opens up a whole world of possibilities in which you have your ability to listen and to be uh, aware this is this, this is this is this is a beautiful thread i think mel so that that that's a perfect example of a channel where we can um you know the, i'm sure there's a lot of funding um that could be explored around how we as a society listen you know right now like even just think about how we're listening to what's happening right right now um um with uh with with corona with the the way we're listening and what's in mainstream um, music. So, so Mel, thank you. Great, great suggestion. Who, who would like to go next? Uh, I'd love to go next. It's Micra. Um, you know, I see sound as the conduit between spirit and science or consciousness and science. And I think that if we, um, you know, if we use epigenetics, the epigenetics of sound to inform precision evolution, right? So, so back to your, your um, comment on human potential, what, what that would allow us to do is to do what David is saying is to take it all the way down, right? How does sound affect the molecular level? And then how does it affect the entire ecosystem? So from the micro to the macro, and it would be um, really targeted toward informing evolution, purposeful evolution, because as we all know, if consciousness expands, um, we do things differently here. And so I think sound is that conduit. And so it would be a complex systems, kind of adaptive systems approach that would, um, it would, it would broadly take, uh, take everything, like create a multidimensional lens, and then all of the subsystems could play off of that. So, you know, the, the actual different, um, you know, sound healing in this aspect or technology over here, you know, it could, it could be like a big mind map of everything to do with sound and how it evolves consciousness. It, oh, oh, brilliant. Oh, oh, brilliant, brilliant, yeah. brilliant yeah. micro. Thank you. So what, what I heard, if I can try and do our job of synthesizing as much as possible, what I heard is sound fractals for intentional evolution. How does that summarize? Yeah, like I think that's great. The whole stack, micro to micro, sound fractals for intentional evolution. That's great. Cool. Sound fractals mm -hmm. for intentional um, evolution. Who would like to go next? If I may, uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try and solidify my thoughts because there are so many. Um, but uh, I think there are three aspects to this. The first is the research and the study of um, sound and, the, and how it affects us physiologically, emotionally. Um, I came to find David Gibson. I'm now a student at The Globe because I found him through somebody in the trans tech community called Sanjay Manchada. Um, he and I are putting together a team of people to carry out this research, which will use different types of science-based methodology. 
but I think the kind of like unifying what's been said, I think what happens after that is the awareness. We've talked about, you know, listening, but I think sound awareness and bringing people's attention to sound pollution, uh, which then leads on to sound awareness and the application of one's research of how can we improve our general sound behaviors around us? How can we make people more aware of that? Uh, my, you can see I'm actually a musician. I've been a musician many years. So I perform regularly, um, but my passion really is about working with facial designers um, to incorporate sound awareness and, and actual, you know, the methodology, the application of sound behavior um, in soundscaping environments. Uh, recently, I was at Pandora um, listening to a talk given by somebody called um, Sense Sound, a lady that's gone in, worked with MIT to change the sounds of the machines in hospitals. And my heart goes out to the people in, who are suffering in COVID right now who can't have access to their family members. And I feel sick about the idea that people are alone, not with no ambience, no sound, nothing. They're not allowed anything inside, just living with this abusive cacophony of sound and frequency that clash and this discord. So there's a lot of applications um, and um, I now, as I said, working, being taught by David, who's a wealth of knowledge um, to gather everything I can in order to make this be applicable to everyday society. I want to bring this to the society. I'm about to launch a series on YouTube called The Big Sound, which incorporates performance and elements of sound. But so those are my passions. I feel like I have a lot to offer for this group. And um, I strongly believe that it's about bringing awareness to sound pollution, um, the change in the application of soundscape, not necessarily music, um, even though I am a musician and um, doing the research to back that up and produce those soundscapes. So that's it for me. Thank you, Lucinda. Um, synthesizing into kind of, we love memes here that, that um, can be spread. And um, I had a vision as you were speaking um, called sound hygiene. Uh, and we make a whole like brushing your teeth, like the sound pollution that we can brushing your ears. <laughs> but you know, we be conscious of sound hygiene because Lucian, like, what about what about sound architecture? Because it seems uh, to me that, what that, we're that, talking that. about doing is we're creating about just we're talking about designing sound spaces as structures, just like buildings are designed, and understanding sound as having that kind of impact on people's experience in public space. I, I love that, and I actually think there's two there's two channels there. There's sound in physical space in terms of what's happening there, and then there's the the, the sort of ambiance awareness education that people have of how much sound affects both their performance, their moods, their like flow states, all of those things that I think a lot of people just aren't really aware of yet. So two tracks, like for maybe sound architecture and sound hygiene from a sense. So I think it's really interesting to people that, to think that sound has actually been used as a limiting, um, you know what I'm saying, like uh, to, limit, to limit our potential. Mm -hmm. So who would like to go next? You know, one thing I want to add to that, there's, uh, you know, Don Campbell had a whole company he was working with for creating sound landscapes in hospitals. And now Gary Malkin, after Don died, has carried that forward. So there's some really cool work and research already being done in this area that could be taken much further into what you guys are talking about. Excellent. Thank you for that, David. Does anyone else want to go? I wanted to speak to um, just put some, some new topics in there. I was really tuning into it. And I think um, there's two important channels or categories that we look at when we look at the altered states of consciousness that are induced through sound journey work. And the two pieces are the subconscious work, which is about deep hypnotic states and accessing the subconscious material for processing, which is, is really essential for, for healing um, and really you know, important trauma work. And then the second channel is the idea of um, using sound journey work to induce peak mystical experiences, much like I was talking 
uh, in our first call about this idea of producing endogenous 5-MeO-DMT through these altered states of consciousness, which can induce a peak mystical experience, which in itself, in that um, disassembling of the egoic framework, can allow someone to have a really potent healing experience in recontextualizing um, you know, whatever the core essence is that is um, creating the, the sickness within. Thank you, Tricia. And Leo, I think you wanted to speak next. Yeah, I think there's a, a practical issue and it relates uh, to what David said and to what many others have said. You know, we live in a society that uh, really values music. People know that music makes them feel better. Um, but at the same time, if you talk about sound for health, I think it, it's still kind of woo. People don't really understand it. So I think that there's a marketing um, effort that needs to happen, understanding where people are and how to meet them where they are. So basically, just very practically communicating what we understand about sound um, from a physiological level, from a emotional level, from a um, psychological level, creating, I don't know, a matrix of what we know. Uh, that we can use to um, communicate to people what's going on with sound and healing. I, I totally agree, Leo. Thank you for those thoughts. David really spoke to this out of the gate about, you know, we're talking about hospital systems and it's not, that's not an easy in. Um, there's a, a, it's a lot of things that have to happen to be able to get in a, a clear explanation and science is an important piece to this. I think a lot of us here and speaking of 5-MeO journeys and different medicine experiences, and we know those healing powers personally, but to translate that to doctors and the patients that don't have that familiarity is a big key for us here and something that uh, we all need to be sitting with as we you know, process all these different ideas. Um, we're about three minutes left to 1230. We want to respect everyone's time. So let's take a couple more and then we're going to wrap things up for today. I know it feels like we're really just dipping our toe. Uh, and we are, we spend a lot of time in introductions in the end. Uh, there's great purpose with that. And I just want a quick uh, check in that we're gonna have much deeper dives Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as we split off into groups and take some of the notes that we're taking now, which we will translate to everyone on the call uh, so that we can pick it up tomorrow and really dive in much quicker and much deeper. Uh, but we have a little bit of time left. Does anyone feel called to, to speak? I do. Hey. Oh. Um, I just wanted to uh, echo a little bit about something that Shane said about how people come to us and why. And I think um, something really important to emphasize in communication is that um, people come to us because they're looking for a way to activate their own healer inside of them. And they're looking for that tool. And it's really important to give them knowledge in digestible forms. Um, and that being said, sound being one of our five major senses and um, I really liked what Luce, I think it was Lulu said about sound pollution because, um, you know, sound is actually one of the senses that we have the least control over in our environment. And the reason is, is because we can't control the siren that's playing on the street or something that's coming out of the news that happens to, that we pick up on or something that's being played on the radio that we have no control over other than muting it. And that also occurs in our daily lives with people calling us with bad news or negative things. Um, and so really making people aware of what they're subscribing to in terms of sound and what they can control with the type of music they choose to listen to. I personally um, use ancient practices of Ayurveda to look at someone's tongue and scan what's happening in terms of their anxiety or lack of sleep, et cetera, et cetera, and then prescribe them with different sounds that would help ground them. So I also think something that's really important is bringing back ancient sounds, teaching people stuff that they can use to just access their, their own voice and stimulate the vagus nerve and understand how to do that, um, like Shane was saying, from anywhere, any place. Um, even if you're super poor or super rich, you already have the tool in you to begin to activate that inside. Big yes, Serena, yes. Empowering people is another big piece to this. Uh, even in the languaging that we use as sound healers, you know, having understanding that people are healing themselves. We're just giving them, you know, helping to give them the right tools. Um, we're right at 1230. Um, I think we need to go ahead and wrap up. 
Um, if anybody has another quick one minute, I'm open to that. Um, I, go ahead. I just, I just want to mention that I'm going to do a, a couple hour workshop on the physics of sound and how it works. Uh, this was my keynote from a conference last year. And it's tomorrow night at 630 if people want to join. I just put it in the Zoom and sure. uh, in, in the uh, chat and put the Zoom link there if you guys want to come. And then we can just uh, have a discussion afterwards as to, you know, different ideas other than, you know, what I'll present afterwards. So, so David, David, you mean uh, that you're going to have an up-level field trip? <laughs> yes, that's right. Right. It's, it's, it's like a, a side conference going on that's totally tied in. It's totally perfect. Right. It's expanding exponentially. <laughs> it might be good quite a few field trips. Uh, there's, there's quite a number of us tuned into Amanda Gregory's um, just unbelievable performance on Saturday night. Yeah, I was there. Beautiful. Yeah. And I just speaking of performances, my uh, teacher, Paul Hubbard, who's on the call as well, is doing a sound meditation tonight. Paul, could you speak to that a little bit? I was, I was just about to say something. We, we, we had that. Um, yeah, oh, this. I, I know it's brilliant. <laughs> um, this evening, 730, I'll be doing a holographic sound healing uh, meditation healing experience. And it's a live stream on Facebook. Uh, 7.30 Central Time, so it'll be 5.30 your time, uh, or, you know, you know how to figure all that out, or 8.30 East Coast Time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, you'll, you'll be able to experience a little bit about uh, what I do, I, I work with this as, as what I call holographic sound, and it's taking sound and opening it up multidimensionally. And it's, it's through a blend of the sound and sacred geometric technique. So uh, join me, check it out. And uh, tomorrow I'm gonna be probably be late coming in because I've got a, a client a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, but I will join the call tomorrow and uh, just check out the experience if you've got the time uh, and let me know what uh, you Paul, think. Paul, how do we find that? Uh, you can go to... Could you, uh, Paul, on, could you just uh, put it in the chat here so everyone can see the link? Yeah, I'm not real. I will. Uh, yeah. I'm just kind of learning this yeah. stuff. We'll, do, uh, we'll have a follow-up email to this call as well, and I'll drop those details in so you guys can find it. Great. And again, as we wrap up today, uh, We'll follow up with these notes. Um, I need a little more on your own. Anything that comes to you in the meantime, um, please hold that, make note, and bring it to the table tomorrow. Because again, I know some of, some of you didn't have the opportunity to speak uh, today. It was, again, a quick intro and drip. But the intention of the next three days is a real deep dive in smaller groups. So come with what you'd like to share. And also, I mean, follow up to the email, anyone who wants to share sound in our yin piece uh, to begin tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, we're very open to that. So please send us uh, what your offering would be. Brian, I see you. I think you'll just go ahead and do tomorrow because you're calling it in. No, he said Wednesday. Brian said he can do it on Wednesday. Wednesday is best for me. Uh, thank you. Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to add? No, just I want to thank everybody for being here and honor the container that we've created by staying on time as much as we can and uh, really appreciate all of the energies being brought together here and excited at what we can create together. So, I have can, you, I can, can you guys send a picture of that blackboard? That's the coolest oh, yeah. thing ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we want that. <laughs> yeah, we'll have the notes. We're sending out the notes. I think it's called the ancient future. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you all so much for joining. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is this is um, our second birthday. It couldn't have got off to a better start. Thank oh you. yeah, may the fourth be with you. Um, uh, <laughs> this is this is like this is literally dreams and prayers. So um, happy birthday! <laughs> yes, thank you. Yay! Before we get this mess, I would I would love to offer one last piece that just came through for me in the last like ten minutes. Please, sure, please.
Um, Cause I think it's one topic that we seldom don't always get around to. And it's one um, very strong intention that Pachamama gave to me years ago and actually set a lot of the precedents as to why I do the work that I do. Um, and I think one of the biggest uh, challenges that we face in bringing um, sound as a modality of healing to the world, especially for those of us who are not um, connected to it, is we have lost our connection to the reverence of what sound is. And reestablishing humanity's connection to it um, is pivotal. And we have to move beyond the, the constructs of it being music because it's not. It, even the terminology of music is a bastardization of its reverence. Because if you think about it, sound was never termed and or coined as music. It was always a reverent ritual in the most basic of practices. And through the use of, don't get me wrong, Gregorian chants and all of this stuff, it became um, institutionalized in religious dogmatic and you know various ritualistic ceremonial um perspectives but it it's kind of tenacity for its impact like l was lost through um was lost through these uh through these applications of of you know control in, in this in this regard and being able to um being able to figure out tools and marketing and you know campaigning to reestablish humanity's connection to sound as ri as ritual as reverence to spirit because this is how we always would connect with it this is how we connected to our ancients this is how we connected to ourselves um and we don't have that anymore and it's pivotal that we find ways to reestablish this connection and until we do, sound will never be seen as wellness in my personal perspective. Beautiful. Powerful, Shane. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. So, you know, in, in, in my years of sharing, this is something that I have discovered and remembered, not only for myself, but also seeing the, the, the energy projection of the sharing with others, and then the, the reflection of the energy back to me of, oh my God, I've never experienced sound this way, I'm sure so many of us on this call have heard this type of, of feedback from people of I've never heard it like I've never interpreted it in this way and this is a mile marker in our in our journey and also uh, as our applications of sound um, to be able to provide some level of facilitation education and remembrance to um, to to every individual that we come in contact with because because we aren't just playing the music. It is so much more than that. And that I believe is the really the, the, the beginning bridge in being able to establish this as a much more um, pivotal tool as, as application. So. Aho. Aho, Shane, thank Aho. you. I think we all couldn't agree more. I'm seeing all the her hands and the clicks and everything. And that's something that I really want to say as we close, it's all hold because what Shane speaks is so true. And it circles back to what uh, David's been talking about and others and that we have to make this that translatable to people that don't have our life experience and understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Health, yeah. And body and soul. But how do we help them and make everyone feel really safe, honestly, to allow patients to have this medicine? Um, thank you all so much again for taking the time. We're so stoked here at Savannah House. So ready for the rest of this week. It cannot be 11 a.m. tomorrow fast enough for me. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have fun with the notes and see everyone back here tomorrow. Much love. Thank you. Know. you. Thank you everybody for bringing us together. Thank so you. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 We'll come in. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Of course. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. <laughs> See you tomorrow.